Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This franchise has gone through so much with it being a beloved book series, then turned into terribly adapted movies, and now finally a TV show that took years to create. So yeah, suffice to say, Percy Jackson hasn't had the easiest time being adapted to the big screen. There were a lot of hardships to get to this point. But we are finally here with the Percy Jackson and the Olympians TV show on Disney+. And as someone who has fallen in love with this franchise for almost a decade now, has wanted a faithful on-screen adaptation for years, and as a person who understands and appreciates the craft of filmmaking, I'm finally here to answer the age-old question. Does Percy Jackson work on the big screen? Let's start with the first episode. How would I describe my experience watching this episode? Well, I ate fine dining, my friends. And it was glorious. Everything from the small to the big details were included. There were some cuts from the book and some shortened down scenes. However, it was clear that this show took the most important aspects of the book, plus extra details, and weaved it all together to capture the same magic the book did. Small details like the Myth of Magic cards, monsters disintegrating into dust, and blue food. Big details like Percy and Sally's relationship, and the massive scale of the Minotaur fight. All of it is here. Also, the way the episode cuts to black at certain points, which makes it feel like you're reading separate chapters in the book is great. Now, some of my favorite moments in this episode have got to be Mrs. Dodds transforming into a monster. It just looked awesome of how those humans would transition into monsters. I also like Percy and Sally's relationship, as I think it was done better here than even in the books. You really feel the mother and son relationship between the two. I mean, the moment where she told Percy, you are not broken, I actually teared up, not gonna lie, even though I read this book like 50 times. Also, the dream sequence with Kronos. Absolutely loved seeing that, since we've never seen that adapted before. Also, the car chase scene was great. You really feel the danger here. And of course, the Minotaur fight itself is something I've been waiting for. And it actually surpassed my expectations. It is incredibly well made. I love the anger Percy's got in this scene as he swings his sword and climbs atop the Minotaur and finally brings down the killing blow by ripping his horn off. Cinema. That's what that was. Speaking of which, as a piece of film, how does it hold up? Again, also extremely good. I think the acting was great from everybody. I honestly think that every actor did a great job feeling like their characters. The standouts in this episode for me was definitely Percy and Sally. You care for those two instantly. Cinematography wise was spectacular. Every shot had a crisp and dark feel to it with splashes of color that gives the characters and background just more life. The soundtrack absolutely slapped. The standout songs to me was definitely the opening narration song, the Minotaur car chase song, and the end credits song. And what did I think of the effects? Again, Again, also very good. Especially the Minotaur worked really well with all the rain and lightning with this big epic battle and oh man, they did a great job with that. They definitely put work into the CGI because it just felt right. Now what are some things that I didn't like in this episode? Honestly? Not much. Mostly just storytelling nitpicks. For example, I wish Percy learned about Kronos at the Met Museum like in the books to foreshadow Kronos. I mean, he's already in the dream sequence, but I think it'd be nice to connect those two. And also there was a lot of dialogue and exposition in this episode, which isn't completely bad. The actors actually did a very good job with the exposition, and Percy learning about the Greek world through his mom made sense, since this story is through Percy's eyes. However, I wouldn't have minded showing a little more to what Percy is being told. So, out of 5, what would I rank this episode? 4.5 out of 5. It's fun, action-packed, full of world building, great acting, wonderful cinematography, engaging soundtrack, and most importantly, it was faithful to the books. I had high hopes for this episode and it delivered, man. Now, onto the second episode. This episode was a blast, and call me crazy, but I think it's actually better than the first episode. I liked basically everything about it, the pacing was well done. It felt like the Camp Half-Blood chapter was made to be a television episode. Some of my favorite moments include everything with Mr. D, every line he had and all his back and forth with Percy was hilarious. I loved all of Camp Half-Blood. No seriously, they did a phenomenal job. When I saw the wide shot of the entire camp, it actually looks like exactly as I pictured it. Most of Percy's lines were fantastic in this episode. I really liked the one where he made a prayer to his mother, telling her that he will make Poseidon see him. He wants to make the gods see him. This, this, this right here very much sets up Percy's arc for the final season. Also like the stuff with Luke, as he had a great role of being Percy's friend while hinting to the audience, foreshadowing his character arc. Another great character was Annabeth, with her and Percy having really good chemistry and good writing that felt true to her character. 
I mean, the moment where she fixes Percy's strap on his armor, very nice touch. And of course, the entire Capture the Flag match with Clarice was fantastic. Love the fast-paced sword fighting. It feels right for Percy Jackson fight scenes. Now, as a piece of film, how does it hold up? Again, it was incredible. The acting from everyone was great, though I think the standouts for me has got to be Percy and Chiron, especially Chiron, who did a great job with his line delivery. Cinematography-wise was also fantastic. I didn't love the cinematography as much as the first episode. However, it's a lot brighter in tone, which definitely fits the vibe of this episode. The soundtrack actually went crazy in this episode. The standouts for me was the Camp Half-Blood training song. It plays during Luke explaining who Annabeth is to Percy. And another I liked was the one that plays during the Percy versus Clarice fight. And as for the effects, standouts were Chiron's horse body and the Dryad tree spirit. Both just looked very good, especially the Dryad. Now in terms of stuff I didn't like, once again, cannot complain about much. Maybe I would've just liked a tad bit more time to show the camp's reaction to Percy being a son of Poseidon, but I have a feeling we'll see that more in the next episode. So, out of five, what would I rank this episode? Five out of five. I do think the first episode had the bigger spectacles and higher stakes, but this episode surprised me, man, with the amount of emotion, story, world building, and just the way the entire episode is structured felt right for an episode for television. And it was faithful to the books. That's everything I can ask for. That's my review of Percy Jackson and the Olympians Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2. Let me know your thoughts of the two episodes in the comments below. Thank you for watching.